Hey everyone, this is Jace bringing you another Ever Crisis video. Today I'm going to be showing you the clear of a very hard Sunsing Cave on my account, which I definitely think is the harder of the two very hard Crisis dungeons that we have available right now. And that kind of caught me off guard because usually the second one is the harder one. Uh, but nope, definitely Sunsing Cave, in my opinion, is the harder of the two. Uh, this run is going to look like I'm just kind of blowing up bosses and not really having to try. That is not the case. What you're seeing is the result of a lot of planning and also having the benefit of being able to review other people's guides, uh, such as Bodhi's guide and Nightlight 9's guide that I'll go ahead and link in the description down below. Um, but because I was able to review those, I was able to plan out my route and this is the final result. Let's take a look at Sephiroth here. I'm running him as a magic DPS, 7k HP, 3.1k magic attack. I'm using Kuja's attire, which brings boost HP and boost magical ability potency. Edge wings at OB4 in the main hand, Torn wings in the off hand. Uh, for materia, I'm running one circle materia, or one circle ruin, excuse me, one X ruin. Both are magic attack stat sticks, and I'm running a four star Fyra. Um, OB3 Sun Umbrella, OB1 Power Soul, and OB4 Silver Staff, uh, Aerith's Weapon for some additional ice potency. As for Zephyros R abilities, here they are level four magic ability potency, and level six magic attack. For Matt, he's looking at 7.4k HP, 2.7k physical attack. For his outfit, I'm using his killer attire, boost HP and boost physical ability potency. Main handing Killer Hornet at OB4. Uh, offhand is Stingray at OB2, which I actually regret bringing. I wish I had brought Slick Beetle instead. Uh, we don't have enough magic damage dealers on the team to really benefit from that magic defense down. Uh, Lazara Blow, 5 star. 4-star uh, Fire Blow, and then a 3-star Ruin Reblow Circle. Uh, Hellfire as the summon, Lefko Kipselli, Mad Minute, Bald Eagle for his sub-weapons. Focusing on physical attack and HP, here is our abilities. Maxed out physical attack, level 5 boost physical ability potency. For Aerith, we're looking at 6.7k HP, 1.8k magic attacks, not really that high. Almost 2k healing, which honestly is kind of surprising to me. For her outfit, uh, Chocobo suit, which brings uh, HP and magic defense. For her materia, uh, an X Ruinra and a Circle Ruinra, uh, both bringing some decent magic attack. And then a healing Azuna for poison, which I don't really end up using a whole lot. I wish I brought a Kira instead. Level 5 Judgment Bolt for her summon. Uh, OB6 Hardcore Squad, uh, the Critical Threat Barret Weapon, and the Holiday Sword for Cloud as Aerith's sub weapons. For her R abilities, here they are. A decent amount of magic defense up, which I wish would save her. <laughs> Sorry, spoiler. Um, <laughs> boost, boost heal at a, a pretty decent level as well. Alright, before we actually get into the dungeon itself, I'm also going to walk you all through the bosses that we're going to be fighting throughout the dungeon, and I'll show them to you in the order that I fought them in the actual run. Starting with Motorball, uh, weak to Thunder, uh, can't really debuff him all that much. Next is the Sahagan Prince. He's going to buff his physical attack and then jump one of your party members. He's flanked by two elite sentries that will try to throw grenades at you and will buff themselves as well. Uh, the next boss I ended up fighting was the Scorpion Sentinel, which I actually regret. I wish I'd fought it second instead of third, but that's for later. Weak to Ice and Thunder. He's going to target one of your party members and try to nuke them with a magic attack. He's flanked by two Wrath Hounds that are weak to ice, but they apply poison, so they can be very dangerous if they aren't dealt with quickly. Next boss that I fought was Galley B, or Stamp, weak to fire. Uh, I'll explain more about this fight as it's going on. There's a decent amount going on when you're not farming him through genome pods. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have Reno as the final boss. Hits really hard, is weak to ice, and he's flanked by two more Wrath Hounds, so you have more poison to deal with if you don't kill these guys pretty quickly. Now, there's something missing in the build that I showed you for one of the bosses that we're going to be fighting. If you want to take a moment to guess what that is, feel free. And if this guide ends up being helpful for you, uh, feel free to like and subscribe. I plan to continue making more. Let's get into it. Alright, starting off, we're going to go ahead and pick up the cocktails and other items that are in this chest. And we're going to go straight into fighting the motorball. Now, if you haven't guessed already, what I forgot to put on my characters was lightning damage, and this is when I realized it. I looked at both of my DPS characters and I was like, ugh, crap. So, what we ended up doing is just, you know, taking advantage of the fact that 
Edged Wings has extra sigil break for X sigils. Uh, Killer Hornet has extra sigil break for Circle sigils, so we're able to get through those pretty quickly. And now that the gauge is maxed out, we can use Matt's Killer Hornet to get through a few of these Diamond sigils and end this boss's stream phase. Because the longer this boss's stream phase goes on, the more aggressive it gets with its attacks. Once we've uh, broken all the sigils, I figure Air Aerial Frostbite is probably the best thing I can use with Sephiroth. Uh, the AI opts to use the Bizarre Blow for Matt, but we're just gonna whittle this boss down with whatever we have since even though I had foresight and reviewed some guides before making my own, I still forgot to bring lightning damage. So that means we're also going to have to tank this rolling fire and deal with the HP that, or maximum HP that we're going to lose. It just kind of is what it is. We're still going to be able to whittle our way through the boss's uh, HP. And if you are a newer player and haven't really seen this boss all that often, uh, you've seen the entire fight. The boss is just going to repeat what it's done so far over and over. It's going to go back into a stream phase. During that stream phase, as you can see by the debuff that's on Matt, he's going to pick one of your party members and reduce their physical defense by five tiers. <laughs> a lot of tiers. And he's going to do some single target attacks against them. He's going to do some AoEs to the party. And it just ends up being more and more damage as you go along. Now here I finally have all three of my summons ready. I opt to use Judgment Bolt because I figure, okay, lightning damage, it'll get me to the fight a little bit quicker. And it does deal a decent amount of damage, about 15k. It's not the massive nuke that I was hoping that it would be, uh, but it deals a decent amount of damage and speeds up the fight just a little bit. Uh, but that's about it for this fight. You've seen the whole thing. We're just going to continue whittling them down. I'm not going to use Hellfire or Diamond Dust just yet. I'd like to save those for the bosses coming up. Although I probably could have used both of them and still had them up for the next fight with how long this took. Either way, that's the first boss down. Uh, we still end up getting a pretty decent score, which to be honest, really surprised me. I wasn't expecting to get above 50k. It felt like that boss fight took forever, but I guess the game disagreed with me. Uh, about 50, just over 50k is a pretty decent score to be shooting for in a standard very hard crisis dungeon. Uh, for the trans abilities here, I looked and saw that I didn't bring any magic attack down or physical attack down, but I didn't want to sacrifice any of my defense, so I just went with the physical attack down duration. I actually didn't know there was a random encounter over here, I was just kind of exploring the dungeon and I was a little bit bummed. Uh, I imagine these these enemies are also weak to lightning, which I didn't bring, and if I had known about these I would have planned out the route a little bit uh, differently because now I'm just wasting time with maxed out summons on two of my characters instead of being able to use those summons on bosses and continue with the rest, but you know, it's fine. We go ahead and slide down the slope here, there's a little item over in this area, just in case you uh, were going to miss it. Uh, but the next fight that we're going to do is the one with the Sahagan Prince and the two elite sentries. The plan here is just to use Hellfire right off the bat, since all three of them are weak to fire, and this is just going to get rid of the elite sentries right off the bat. And that's going to leave us just fighting the Sahagan Prince, with maybe about 55 to 60 percent of his HP left. He's going to go ahead and buff himself and we're just going to try and take him down as quickly as possible because again we didn't bring any physical attack down because I'm so good at planning even when I have foresight but you know whatever we're able to break this uh, stream phase and he's just gonna flop over he's he's just not that strong especially when you've gotten rid of the side adds he doesn't have a whole lot of HP uh, especially if you are hitting for fire weakness so we end up getting a pretty decent score for that battle. Uh, above 60k is really good. Um, that's even if it were a very hard dungeon raking, that's a good score. Now for the R, or trance ability rather, I spent some time thinking about it. I decided to go for the healing potency without sacrificing anything else. I wanted to just be safe throughout the rest of the dungeon, and so I, I figured we had enough damage given what we just did to that previous boss. Um, so yeah, I decided I wanted to be safe, which is ironic, um, given what's about to happen during this fight. So I decided to wait for uh, a chance to apply 
Matt's magic defense down to the boss before going into the Diamond Dust Summon to deal some damage to the boss and get rid of the adds. I was hoping it was going to deal more damage than that, but that's still a pretty decent chunk of the boss's HP. If you're not too familiar with this boss, what he's going to do is he's going to target one of your party members. In this case, it's Aerith from my team, and he's going to continuously apply a magic defense down to that character. Now, I have Aerith's Chocobo Staff, which has a magic defense up buff. So if you stay on top of it, you can consistently cancel out all the debuffing that he's doing to your character if you're staying on top of it. As you can see, I forgot to get the uh, forgot, forgot to take care of the last debuff there, and down goes Aerith by just a couple, like maybe 100 or 200 HP. So my healer's dead. Thankfully, uh, we have Sephiroth on the team who can hit Ice Weakness in his sleep. Uh, we use Matt to continuously reduce the magic defense of the boss, and even with a dead healer, we're going to be able to get through the rest of this fight just fine. As for the rest of the mechanics of this boss, he's eventually going to go into a stream phase, and during that stream phase, he will counter any magic damage that you do. So if you end up having to deal with that stream phase, make sure that you bring uh, Ruinra Blows instead of Ruinra. Um, otherwise, he's going to counter you with an AoE Tail Laser, and that still hurts pretty bad. Uh, so just in case you end up getting to that point, that's what you need to do. He has another stream phase after that called Blockade Wall, where you can't really damage him until you get through the stream phase, and you can deal with that if you have to. Uh, in terms of my team, we're still able to get a pretty decent score, about 56k, even with our healer getting absolutely nuked. Um, I opt to, for the trance ability, go with the fire potency because there are no other enemies in this dungeon that we need to worry about being weak to thunder, so it's okay to sacrifice that lightning potency in order to get more fire potency. Um, I had something going on uh, in real life here, I had to pause the crisis dungeon and come back to it. Uh, once I came back, I remembered, oh hey, I let my healer die, and I used a supplement on her, and then I just kind of figured, you know what, screw it, I'm just going to use a cottage. I, I imagine I'm doing well enough score-wise, even with that death, that I can probably get away with using a few items. Uh, the next boss that we're going to be fighting is Galley B, slash Stamp, slash Genome Pod Farm, uh, except when his CP is pretty high, he can be pretty dangerous. So I opted to use a couple of fire cocktails just to be safe because this was my first run of the Crisis Dungeon. Swap to defensive stance immediately when you're fighting this boss because the first thing he's going to do is rush you there and that's going to apply two tiers of physical defense down to your entire party. The next thing that's going to happen is he's going to summon a gauge. You need to deal fire damage to get through this gauge and if you don't he's going to deal a lot of damage. The more you can deplete the gauge, the less damage this Thunderfall ability that he's charging up is going to deal. Uh, especially with the fire cocktails, we're able to get through the gauge very, very quickly, which, as you can see, stuns him. Um, we have our Hellfire and Diamond Dust summons ready, and I'm holding them uh, for a specific moment that's coming up. But for now, you know, you want to make sure that you're fully topped off because Thunderfall hurts. Um, you saw my team was pretty well topped up there, and he brings us down very, very low. So we're going to heal up with Aerith. And the reason I was holding those summons is for the stream phase that's about to start right here. When he goes into the irate stream phase, he gets a magic and physical defense down that's pretty strong. And so we're going to use this opportunity to use Hellfire because he's weak to fire. And it's going to deal a big chunk of damage. And then we're able to just snipe him right after that. If you end up needing to go through the rest of the fight, uh, when you break that stream phase, he'll do a quick AoE that can stun your party. And then I believe he does another physical attack that's not telegraphed super well, it's, it's a pretty quick one. But then he'll go into another stream phase where he's healing himself and buffing his, ma his magic and physical defense. Uh, break him quickly uh, to end that and then he'll do, uh, he'll buff his uh, physical and magical defense again after that and go back into Thunderfall. You want to kill him before you get to that point. Okay. So I opted to go for the Ice Potency at the cost of Lightning and Fire Potency because the last boss, Reno, is weak to Ice. This random encounter here, three Wrath Hounds. They're just going to poison you like crazy. I figured, hey, I'll bring Azuna for poison and I'll cleanse it. As you can see, I cannot cleanse it fast enough. So Matt is just, he's going down real fast. He's at 1 HP. We get really, really lucky here. They don't target Matt again, and we are able to kill off the enemies one by one without any of our party members dying. If any of our party members had died, 
honestly, as long as all of them didn't die, <laughs> it would have been just fine. We can use items to get our HP back, but we're able to get through that fight just fine. It wasn't even worth bringing the healing Azuna for poison. I opt to use a cottage here just to get everybody nice and topped off. And I did some thinking here and I figured I'm sure our score is still just fine. I'll go ahead and use a Blizzard Cocktail on both Matt and Sephiroth. We have Diamond Dust ready going into this last fight. And so we head on in. I considered waiting until I could apply uh, a magic defense down to Reno using Matt's Core Sting. I opted to just go straight into Diamond Dust. And you'll see after Diamond Dust, it's honestly a really good thing that I did. First off, this kills the adds. We don't have to worry about poison ridiculousness. And it deals a very nice chunk of damage to Reno. And Reno immediately puts Pyramid on Matt. So I wouldn't have been able to use that debuff anyway. This is why we brought uh, Circle and X Sigil for Aerith, uh, as well as for Sephiroth, uh, just to make sure that whoever got Pyramid or hit with Pyramid, it wouldn't completely lock us out of one of the Sigils we need. We're able to break that. I put uh, a high tier magic defense down debuff on Reno using Matt, and then Sephiroth is just going to be chunking Reno with ice damage until Reno is dead. He's not even going to get this Electro Burst off. Sorry for the spoiler, but this fight's over. Uh, if you end up needing to take the fight further, just know that Reno does a lot of physical attacks. So be ready to uh, shield uh, the party members getting focused down, because uh, he hits really, really hard, and he hits really, really fast. Um, I recommend just trying to kill him as quickly as possible, and in fact, that's the theme for the whole dungeon. Just kill it before it can become too dangerous. If you leave any of those bosses alive for too long, they're very, very dangerous. So, yeah, that is the whole run. Um, a big shout out to Nightlight9 for his uh, very hard sensing cave guide that allowed me to build a route for mine. I still didn't learn some of the lessons that you tried to teach, uh, but you know we made it through just fine. Uh, if you found this video helpful, uh, please feel to give me a like and a subscribe. I plan on making additional guides and content going forward. And until next time, thanks for watching.